Hey. Haven't done a video here in a hot minute, but I thought it'd be nice to shoot here because we're also doing something that we haven't done in a hot minute. We're doing a nice little tutorial, gonna teach you something quick and easy here. Something to help you improve your content a little bit. I was in LA this last weekend, spent the day with Nicewig, got our, Got our gains on? I am still very sore from that, by the way, wig. But while I was there, he asked me a ton of questions about his camera. He had a pretty nice 4K mirrorless camera to set up, and all of his settings were wrong. No offense, nice wig, you're, you're probably in the norm there. And I realized I don't think I have a video on how to set up your settings for streaming. So let's see how quickly we can do that. I wanna get like a five minute tutorial on how to get the perfect settings for your stream camera, whether it's a webcam or whether it's a mirrorless camera or whether it's some honking beast like this. Let's go over it, shall we? Let's do it. You know, since we got some tips today for the webcam folks, our sponsor today is this super high quality webcam called the Insta360 Link. You guys have seen this thing, right? You know what I'm talking about? It's that 4K webcam that everyone, including myself, has been raving about. And the reasons that I think everyone loves this camera are five-fold. Number one, the quality is fantastic. The sensor in this thing is just considerably larger than most webcams, which allows you to get more light in here and just an objectively better image. It has three motors that are controlled by a built-in AI algorithm. What does that mean? Well, it means this thing is from the future. It can follow you and zoom in on you if you get far away, all completely automatically. You can control the camera entirely with hand gestures. You want the motors to stop moving? Hold your hand up like this, or tap the touch key. You want it to start moving again? Hold up your hand again. You wanna zoom in? Give it the L, and the V gives you whiteboard mode. Number four, presets. This one wasn't talked a lot by a lot of creators, but I think it's one of the most useful things about it. The ability to set the camera motors and zooms in certain positions and then save those to presets. And then you set hotkeys to switch back and forth between them super easily. It makes a lot of sense for streamers that aren't always in the same place. And number five, auto switch to vertical. Great for making shorts and TikToks in super high quality. And there's a bunch of other stuff. You got HDR support, privacy mode, overhead mode for a desk view. Oh, and I'll be doing a giveaway with Insta360 on my Twitter. So I will link to that tweet. I will also just link to this camera in the description down below. Go check it out. All right, so we're gonna see how fast we can do this. So Dustin, can you set a timer in the bottom corner? I don't know, maybe like five minutes or something. See if we can power through this in five minutes. Are you ready? We got the FX3, don't start the timer yet. Hold on, we got the FX3 here, we got the PC here, and if it starts to sound like a jet engine, it is what it is. You can see my settings on the screen down here. It's a lot of numbers, it might be intimidating right now. Don't worry, we're gonna fix it. Start the timer. Now, step one, the first thing you need to do to get your camera looking amazing is your lighting. Actually, that's a lie. Set your camera to video mode. That's the real step one. That's the whole thing, set it to video mode. Okay, now back to lighting. There are a lot of ways you can light yourself. None of them is better than the other. They all give you different feels. You can do very balanced lighting like you see in a lot of Twitch streams. You can go for more moody, one-sided lighting. This is actually called Rembrandt lighting. But as long as you follow two things, you should be just fine. Thing number one, make sure you are lit just as well, if not a little bit brighter than your background. There are people who are really good at lighting and can break that rule properly, but if you're brand new and you're streaming on Twitch, light yourself well, light your background a little bit less. You're the subject. Make yourself the subject. And lighting tip number two, err on the side of too much light. Obviously, you don't wanna scorch your retinas while you're streaming for five hours straight, but it's easy to turn the light down in the camera. It's very hard to add light that doesn't exist. So, light yourself well and err on the side of too much light. Beyond that, the choice is really up to you. Get creative with it, have some fun, use RGB, use multiple lights, do your thing. I'm not judging you. And now that you have your lights set up, you got your room, your scene, your stage, all set up, you can adjust the settings in your camera to perfectly capture that scene. So let's do that. Down here in these settings, there are three different settings. I know there are four groups of numbers, but this sneaky one right here, this isn't a setting. This is actually a meter. This is telling you how bright your scene is, and you want this to be at zero. Right now, my camera's too dim, which is why it's telling me negative 1.7 or negative two. That number is called stops. Right now, I'm two stops underexposed. Don't worry about what that means. Just know you're aiming for zero. The rest of these three, this number, this number, and this number, these are the settings we're gonna be adjusting. The first one we're gonna do is the iris, the one with the F in front of it. That number is letting you know how wide open the iris or the aperture of the lens is. It's like the iris in your eye. You can actually see it 
open and shut. It's pretty cool. The lower this number, the wider open the aperture is, which lets in more light, which is great for a dark gaming room, and also makes your background blurrier. In almost every situation, unless you're getting real artsy here, you want that number to be as low as possible. This lens only goes down to f2.8, but there are fancier lenses like this one that go all the way to f1.4. Or one that I recommend to a lot of streamers is the Sigma 16 mil, which goes all the way down to f1.8. And for a pretty fair price, you get a lot of light in there, you get a lot of background blur, it's a great lens for a great price. So the first thing you do after you set up your lights is you're gonna lower your aperture as much as you can. And that's the whole step. That's the whole thing. Let's move on to the next number, shutter speed right here. This is step number three. The shutter speed is letting you know how long the shutter is open, letting in light for each frame. So if we're using a camera that's 60 FPS, the longest we can let it open is a 60th of a second. That would mean you're letting in light for the entirety of the frame, as long as you possibly can. Now, obviously leaving that sensor open longer is gonna let in more light. For example, I'm at one 160th of a second. Let me speed this up, or I guess slow it down. Let me keep the shutter speed open a little bit longer. I'm only doing 30 FPS, so I'm gonna go all the way to one over 30. And you can see how much brighter I am because I'm letting in light for a lot longer. Now, the problem with doing that is the longer you leave it open, the more motion blur you get because the longer it's open to let in light during the motion. The typical rule of thumb is to have your shutter speed double your frame rate. So if I'm in 30 FPS, I should have it at one over 60. If you're at 60 FPS, like a lot of streamer cameras are, you wanna set it to one, I'd say one over 20, but most cameras actually default to one over 125. It's, it's close enough, it's the same thing. But I have a personal Harris recommendation here. You have a little bit of leeway. Because I'm sitting at a desk and there's no motion blur, no one's gonna notice the difference. It's just gonna be a brighter image. Now you can see I'm a little bit overexposed here. I don't really need to do that. So I'm gonna go back to the proper shutter speed. So both of these two numbers here are actually physical ways to let in more light, whether it's opening up the aperture or leaving the shutter open for longer. This last one over here, the ISO is a digital brightness. It's essentially like when you take a picture on your phone and you open it up and it's dark. So you like crank the brightness slider up. It brightens the image but it also introduces some weird noise. Just, just for fun, let me show you. I'm gonna make my camera really dark here, just for a second, like really dark. And then I'm gonna crank it up over here. This is a good camera. You might not be seeing the noise. <laughs> but Dustin, maybe do a side-by-side -side comparison of like maybe the background over here, this versus the other properly exposed one. There's a pretty significant difference between the two. But there are two things that you can do with the ISO. One, if you don't want your camera auto exposing and getting brighter and darker, depending on the lights in your room or maybe the, the screen flashing on your face, the easiest way to set this is just to turn it up until your exposure, this guy right here, is set at zero. Right now, I have a properly exposed camera with the optimal optimized aperture for background blur and natural light, and optimized shutter speed for motion blur and natural light, and the ISO properly set to get a perfect exposure. You can also set that to automatic if you have a lot of changing stuff in your room or you just don't want to think about it. But I would recommend, especially if you have a little bit more of an affordable camera, maybe something along the lines of like a ZV-E10 or maybe an A5100 that might not do as well in low light, I wouldn't turn this up above I'd say 2000. Once you get above that number, you start to introduce a noticeable amount of noise. And nicer cameras like this one can go a little bit higher without you noticing, but entry level cameras typically can't. Which brings me to the final tip because not all cameras are the same. Maybe you've done all these things and you're having a hard time getting the proper lighting still. There are two things you can do after the fact to fix your low light situation. Number one is, well, kind of the obvious one, Add more lights, get yourself a brighter light. The Elgato key lights are literally 10 times brighter than you will ever need them to be. Maybe add some RGB lights to the room behind you if you're properly exposed, but your room is really noisy and dark. The other thing you can do is you can pick up a faster lens. A faster lens basically just means that the aperture is able to go lower or wider open. So while maybe right now you're using a lens like this that only goes to F4, save up, pick up a lens like this that can go all the way to F. 1.4, or I highly recommend that Sigma lens that goes to f1.8. Actually, here, I'll show you the difference right now. So this lens right now is set at f4, but if I crank it to f1.4, that's a pretty substantial difference in light. Having a fast lens makes a huge difference in both low light performance and in background blur. Did you notice how much blurrier the plant behind me got? Rewind, watch it again. See how much blurrier that plant got. But that's it. How do we do on time? Did we make the five minute mark? I don't know if we made the five minute mark. I tried really hard, guys. But I do hope this was helpful. Hit the like button if you haven't yet, because if you're watching this far, you obviously like the video. And it's free, so 
That's pretty cool. And if you're looking for copyright free music, we just launched the brand new streambeats.com website. It is free music. It's on all streaming platforms and it's totally DMCA free. Feel free to listen to it in the background of your streams. We got like 15 genres right now. You can check them all out at streambeats.com. Link in the description down below. And as always, happy streaming.